Team World Vision Sunday. It's a day we get to invite you to join us in doing something bigger than we could do on our own. It's an invitation to make a difference in the world around us. And yes, we're gonna talk about running a marathon, but don't check out just yet because it's about so much more than just running. It's about learning how to listen to God when he calls us out of our comfort zones in spite of our life circumstances. We're gonna hear from my friend Tim Hookstra today who's gonna share his story on how he came to run on behalf of the poorest in our world so that they might have access to a basic necessity like clean drinking water. It's gonna be a great day today. We're so glad that you're here as we get ready to kick things off in just a moment. You know, the Chicago Marathon, it's so, so special. This city comes together and no one's against each other. Everybody's for each other. The people cheering, 1.7 million spectators. When does anybody like me get that many people cheering for me? Team World Vision family, it is a family. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow we run, these are all people who are seriously committed to changing the world with their feet. The water crisis is something that we think of very little because nobody here in the U.S. has to walk six miles back and forth daily to get water. Because of World Vision's work, children are free to go to school. Women are able to go to work and build up their local community. Hearing all of this just really moved me to know that I could play a small part to help people get the assistance that they need. I was in a motorcycle accident. I wasn't able to walk for about like three, four months. I get like emotional, like just think about it because I'm so grateful that I can run for somebody else. I saw people of all shapes and sizes and I was like, wow, they've actually trained their body so they could do that. When I signed up, I feel like I said little yeses to overcome a lot of no's. When I don't want to get up some mornings, I just like, oh, I'm so tired, I'm too old. So I just close my eyes and said, Lord, I hear you. I'm running. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you all, and uh, I'm grateful and humbled to be here at, at Gathering Point after spending so many uh, years and trips down to Olivet and uh, working with the students. I feel like this is a, a bit of a home for me to be in this area. Uh, I've never had the privilege of being at this particular church. I've known Matt for years and Mark for years, but it's really a privilege, and I thank the, the leadership here for inviting me to be uh, a part of this morning. Uh, I hope you you uh, made your way, if you're in person here, sliding in, right? So this is what happened to me. I got here pretty early this morning, uh, didn't know what the roads would be like. We had about six inches of snow in Chicago uh, and uh, got into my parking spot, stepped out, put my foot down, and I went down onto the ground, all right, hanging onto my door. And once I knew I was okay, I thought, oh, that would have been good to capture on video and use as the intro this morning, right? <laughs> uh, so uh, just really glad that you're here, glad that folks are online with us as well. Um, yeah, you heard a little bit of my story from Mark. Uh, I even showed up in a video, I guess, uh, there for a little bit. And uh, I have run the Chicago Marathon 15 times, started in 2005, before Team World Vision even existed, raised money for World Vision, then encountered uh, Michael Chitwood, who was starting Team World Vision in 2006 and just kept going. And I just want to say this early on, and then I'll come back to it at the end. I only ran those marathons every single year because I was listening for God to say, keep going. You're called. You're called. Didn't always have it together, didn't always uh, do great, but always felt a sense of whether God was calling me into something greater and bigger than myself. Uh, so there's going to be a couple of slides coming up on uh, how I felt over the years. The first one 
I felt pretty good. That was a year actually where I turned 50 years old, uh, ran 50 miles on the day of the Chicago Marathon, starting at two in the morning, raised $50,000 with a whole lot of folks feeling pretty good, all right? Uh, but I also have felt pretty rough. My wife there is asking me, did you know how ugly you looked when you ran the marathon this time? And you can see on my face, yeah, it was a pretty ugly day. And now that I have just kind of taken a little bit of a break because I'm listening to God speak to me, I'm a cheerleader at uh, the first cheer station on the Chicago Marathon, that's me. And I'm serving behind the scenes because I felt that God has been calling me to serve for a few years before I come back into a marathon again. All again, related to Team World Vision and World Vision's efforts. This, by the way, is the very first jersey I ever wore. Not, not too bad, you don't wanna come too close to it, all right? Um, it is heavy and thick before we got better at having our jerseys look more like what you've seen around here before this particular one. So it's just been a great privilege. World Vision, by the way, is uh, a Christian humanitarian organization seeking to give aid and sustainable life-changing uh, work to people around the world. In about 100 countries, we are the largest provider, private provider of clean water in the world. One person every 10 seconds devoted to changing this crisis that has several hundred million people still needing clean water. And uh, really, we tend to work 15 years in an area of a country as we seek to build up a sustainable work that is owned by those who live and work there as well. So that's a little bit about us. I'm excited to have you listen with me today. Listen. I want you to think about something for just a moment. I want you to think about a time when you have been utterly physically thirsty. Maybe there's one that stands out or two or simply a, a general time where you've just felt so desperately thirsty that you needed water. Got that in your mind? Now I want you to take it a step further and think about not only when you were physically thirsty, but times when you have felt almost a mysterious, deeper thirst in your spirit and in your body and maybe in your soul. Something way within that you sensed is, is a calling or a pushing or a change that's needed or, or an endurance or a comfort, whatever it may be, that thirst just as well. In 2007, I was training for my third Chicago Marathon. Still trying to figure out how to do this. Training has never been uh, a great thing for me. I've had to do a lot of it on my own because of my schedule with uh, pastoring a church and doing other work alongside of it. So this was a summer that was really, really hot. In fact, it led to the hottest Chicago Marathon on record where they ran out of water. Um, and that summer, I went on a training run and really just made a terrible, terrible misjudgment. I had carried water. I was on about a 10 to 12 mile run and I carried water with me and didn't make a good plan for where I could refill or have a water source. I went on this run and I was off alongside of a road, uh, running along and running out of water and the heat of the day was rising on me and I was beginning to get desperate. In fact, I was dehydrating uh, rapidly and was very concerned about what was going to happen to me. I started looking down, dragging. I was getting lower to the ground, wondered where I could find water, if I would have to stop a car or, or someone or something, and was walking along. And what I was doing was literally begging God for help. I was calling on him. I was desperate. I mean, whatever... Uh, I could come up with was just coming and pouring out of my heart and my soul. And I was walking alongside of the road past one of those openings in a particular subdivision of homes that had all of the garden entry. And as I was walking by and I'm dragging and begging God, do you know what happened? 
the sprinkler system popped up. And I knew that God had met me. And I got down on the ground and I soaked myself in water and literally I felt as if Jesus was meeting my thirst greater than my physical being. It went deep into my spirit and my soul as I couldn't have come up with that solution. But the sprinklers popped up to give it to me. I want you to listen to this scripture passage that uh, comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, a couple of verses uh, that I want to share with you this morning. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Now, uh, just a little bit of surroundings for Jesus. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. It was a a feast that uh, was practiced by the Jewish people where they recognized every single year the time in their history when they were led out of slavery from Egypt through the desert lands and God constantly was providing water for them in the desert where there seemed to be none. Jesus is at the feast, traditionally celebrating it all week, comes to the last and greatest day of this festival, and in the midst of a gathering where there might have been other teachers, but it was a a moment where Jesus stands untraditionally to the gathering and says, if anyone is thirsty, let them come to me. And surrounding Jesus is all kinds of controversy uh, where people were questioning if he had sanity, sometimes questioning what he said about himself. Some people were desperate for the change that he was offering and listened and received him. If anyone is thirsty, I want you to think about thirst again for a few moments. You may have been in the Christian faith a long time. You may be newer. You may be somewhere in the middle. Maybe you're still considering it. No matter what, I want you to dig deep for that moment of listening way within your heart and your spirit. Asking yourself, what is it that is sustaining your day in, day out living? And what is it that, as Mark shared with us, not to be morbid, we are all going to die What is it that's beyond the grave for us as well? So all of those things coming together, but in the present moment, what is your deepest thirst that's something sustainable and lasting and purposeful and bigger than yourself is leading you? What is it that leads you when you need perseverance through dire and difficult circumstances? This life is not easy, friends, is it? It is filled with ups and downs, the good, the bad, the ugly. My wife and I went through a season in the past few years that we're still trying to to come to grips with deep in ourselves. Her dad died in August of 2019. My dad died at the beginning of the pandemic in June of 2020. My mom died in January of 2021, and her mom died in March of 2021. And we just kept turning to the next parent, to the next parent, to the next parent. And Laura and I would often sit in the car driving from having been with them and trying to either go to the hospital or whatever it might have been or in hospice care. And we were just so grateful just to say, here we are, God. Get us up tomorrow to endure through the day no matter what. God is the one that can give you rivers of living water flowing constantly, mysteriously, powerfully, deep in your soul. And sometimes it's a combination like I experienced that day where it was even a physical and spiritual dynamic that is alive. That's what God is up to. That's what he's inviting you to uh, this day. 
as you listen with me. Now, for each of us, we need to dig deep, listening in a fresh way, perhaps. I mean, really, nothing is sustainable in this life. There's got to be something powerful that is coming from some other place. And Jesus here is basically saying, you know that water in the desert? That's me. I'm the water. Rivers of living, flowing, day by day, meeting you personally, that kind of water. But really, friends, if, if it's just that, if it's just about you and just about sitting with that in your heart and spirit day by day, it really won't lead to the ultimate gift of the living, living and rivers flowing in your body and in your heart and in your spirit. It has to be something that's bigger than this. Love God, be loved by God, and love neighbor. That's the movement. Jesus was inviting people not simply to have their needs met, but he was inviting them then to turn to someone else and lay their life down and come alive to living and flowing waters like that. It's always bigger. It's always greater than just us. And that's what I love about the push of the scriptures is they're always moving to a bigger picture. Jesus is always inviting people into something that he referred to as the kingdom. That's a big word. That's a big concept. That's a big invitation that there's something alive in that that says underneath all of the good, the bad, and the ugly, all of the news of the day, underneath that there's something alive that is on the move that if you take the time to listen and pay attention, Take a deep breath, eyes to hear, ears to listen. God is up to something bigger than just ourselves. You know, uh, I love that as I sat and prayed through this morning, and I, I, I want to be honest with you, I don't do a lot of uh, church Sunday or Saturday night speaking for World Vision because I lead my own church community. But I really felt called to come here today. I felt like God wanted to connect something in us and through us together today in a powerful and fresh way. And so as I've prayed about this and looked at Gathering Point, met with Mark and met Paul uh, along the way, it just struck me that I love the church's uh, kind of a s statement that says for Kankakee County. For Kankakee County. This church isn't just for gathering point people that are present online or in person. This church is for something greater than itself. This church is inviting all of us into something bigger than itself. Now I want you to listen to this scripture that comes from the end of the Bible, the book of Revelation chapter 22. It invites us into something that's big. Just look at it with me. John is the writer, one of the followers of Jesus. He receives a vision about things that are to come, things that, that really are, are needing to come alive to the people as he sends this letter and vision off. Then the angel showed me the river, there it is again, the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. And on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. That's big picture stuff. That's the movement that is alive in that kingdom thing that Jesus constantly was in, uh, introducing to people and that, that he was the very presence of the kingdom. It's moving to something bigger than ourselves for Kankakee County and for beyond, for the nations. Mark mentioned the crisis that so many people and children are in around the world. And do you know there's several hundred million people that don't have 
access to clean water. And in the last few years, we've seen an increase of poverty around the world, globally and even here locally, that, that hasn't been seen in some 30 years. There's needs. And as we wrestle through water and all of its different expressions, it's causing disasters, it's causing its own challenges here in the United States. It is really a crisis in these other countries. I've been to Africa several times, seen the desperation, particularly of children that you see as they have to go to a dirty water source that's used by animals as well as other things and that's their only source. This passage was telling us that God is up to healing the nations. There's water there. There's trees. There's like nourishment alive that is a stir right now that we're, that this church has been traditionally involved in through Team World Vision and probably many other things as well reaching out to the nations, changing lives, because we know that we have to have people come alive to their basic necessities as they come alive to what am I thirsty for even deeper in my life. And we see life change all on the ground in these countries when things like clean water, better education, uh, better hygiene, all of those things start developing in these nations. So again, there's something bigger than just meeting your own thirst. There's something greater than that. Every time I turn on the tap now and drink water like I did this morning after I brushed my teeth, my first uh, water that I drank for the day, I think of kneeling down at that sprinkler system drinking up Jesus' wonder water, but alive to people that needed it. I just really want to tell you clearly that I don't know exactly what your call is today. I know for all of us, we have to answer that question. What's the sustainable, purposeful movement in my life that I am alive to every single day. That's a real foundational key for any of us. Renewing it, coming to it for the first time. Jesus says, come to me. And every day I find myself early in the morning hours, I'm an early riser and, and I have this physical expression to God where I lift my arms and I come to him again to meet the thirst of the day and then to go beyond it. I don't know if there's a purpose that is for Kankakee County that you're alive to or a neighbor or an encounter that you might have being alive to your family in a new way, to siblings, to strangers, whatever it might be. I don't know if there's a purpose that might be coming alive in you in the full Chicago Marathon, but it might be. You have to listen. You need to respond. And I I just want to tell you that you just don't get up every year and decide to run the Chicago Marathon 15 straight times and do that 50-mile run without having purpose and calling from God. And you know, my last one was when I turned 60 so far. Uh, in 2019, I ran, and the only reason I ended at 15 at 60 was because I was training that summer and an overwhelming sense of God was, okay, I want you to stop for a little while and simply serve the team at the marathon. So that's what I've been doing these past few years. So what is your calling? What are you hearing today? You heard Mark mention full marathon, half marathon, 6K. We're going to have an informational meeting right there afterward. I just need 10 minutes to share some thoughts with you. Mark will be sharing some thoughts with you. We're building the full marathon team and the half marathon team. Uh, and uh, we'll be looking at the 6K. There's ways that you can connect and be involved. But simply, are you being called? 
I believe folks here are. So I want to close with this moment this morning. I want you to take a deep breath. There's a a prayer that's going to pop up from Psalm 63. It's one that I pray every single day. God, my God, you I crave. My soul thirsts for you. My body aches for you like a dry and weary land where there is no water. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes for a moment. Get in touch with that thirst. Maybe read this prayer again and offer it. Listen. What's your sustainable movement and purpose, your soul thirst? What's bigger than yourself? Could it be a marathon, half marathon, 6K? God, speak. These are your sons and daughters. They don't belong to anyone ultimately but you. Spirit, speak into their hearts and their lives and their minds right now as only you see fit. And bless them with rivers that are flowing with life-giving, mysterious, powerful wonder water. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.